Good morning everyone. It's very nice to see a good crowd on Sunday morning. So uh, this session is all about how OEMs are catching the opportunities and also catching up to the uh, new upgrades and trends and how uh, we are also uh, making our supply chain better. And to start about myself, I'm Yasmin Javrali, uh, co-founder of Spiro, which is formerly known as Emoto. Uh, Spiro is the largest electric two-wheeler company in Africa with about 20,000 vehicles on PG model with 500 swap stations uh, in West Africa and also on the eastern part. Uh, and my other startup is eDaddy. eDaddy Electric Mobility is about uh, last mile mobility solutions uh, with three wheelers in India and also with two wheelers in GCC market for the delivery companies. Uh, to start up with our session, we have a very good panelist uh, introducing Mr. Ashraf, National Head B2B Operations and Strategic Partnerships. And we have Sandeep, founder and CEO, Alt Opt Alt Mobility. Sandeep is a visionary in electric mobility space, leading his company towards innovative solutions in sustainable transportation. We have Himanshu Sarma, sales director at Alliance Partner India. Himanshu's expertise lies in automotive sales and partnership, crucial for the growth and adoption of electric vehicles. So first let's have uh, a small introduction from each of us and then we can go into the session and we can also follow up the theme. Good morning. Uh, my name is Arbab Ashraf and I head B2B business for Electrix. It's a SAR group company. And when we talk about SAR group, the group comprises of brands like LiveGuard, Batteries, LivePure, RO, Electrix, and then Moving, which is a battery swapping and fleet business company. And this is my 13th year into electric two-wheeler business. I've been working since I graduated and did my MBA. Since then, I'm into electric vehicle work with three OEMs in India with electric two-wheelers, who which are manufacturing electric two-wheelers. And it's great to be here. And this is all about me and looking forward for the discussion. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Sandeep Pathak. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called as Opt Alt Mobility Solutions. Uh, we are a startup in the EV four-wheeler space. So it's a little bit uh, difficult for uh, most of you to absorb because startups will generally be in the two-wheeler, three-wheeler or the ride sharing. But typically you will not really hear of startups other than maybe Ola, uh, but which is really deep pocketed. So we have completed our uh, styling, vehicle engineering, and now we are ready for proto launch. And uh, parallelly, we are trying to work on the project activities, targeting to launch a mid-size SUV somewhere in the middle of 26. And uh, so we have had some exciting times and uh, uh, would be very uh, honored to share certain experiences uh, during the course of the interaction. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Thank you. And as we being in Chennai, so rather than saying a good morning, I would say a wanakam. And thank you so much for uh, taking our time to come down. And uh, I, I really find like-minded people being here and trying to understand how the EV diaspora is heading for a change. A short introduction about me. I am sales director at Allianz Partners. We are more on towards uh, trying to see the customer convenience or probably the assistance services, what we say. Uh, it is to do about anything and everything right from uh, the customer uh, contact management to doing kind of a technical assistances, trying to understand how the customer needs are changing and going back and sharing these feedbacks with our valuable OEM partners. So that's what we are and um, I've been with the organization now for about like 14 odd years. Prior to that was with City, so it has been core assistance services and trying to understand how the customer's requirements, experiences 
and also about how the needs are ever evolving, ever changing and trying to match that. So that's a short introduction about me. Thank you. Uh, so, how and what strategic approaches should OEMs adopt to effectively scale up productions in response to the growing demand of our electric vehicles, considering changes like supply chain constraints and technological integrations? And also, how do you strategize partnerships uh, with technology providers and also suppliers contributing to the innovations and competitive edge of the OEMs? So what's your view and thought about it? So in the last uh, panel discussion, it was very well uh, informed that the largest group of consumers that are taking up right now is the commercial space where the last mile, be it the logistic or the passenger segment, both are picking up. And the lowest hanging fruit today for EV is the commercial space. Now, how do we see it? Because from the supply side, OEMs are working to create a product that fits in the commercial space. Uh, that product should last for five, seven years. It should be compared with the IC vehicle uh, uh, co in comparison with the strength and performance. But on the other side, uh, the payouts or the earning of a rider or a delivery boy is not that much that it works out for, for him to take a quality product. So, uh, Guru said that when uh, someone comes to your home with a Flipkart or Amazon uh, delivery, just see which vehicle he is using. And I would say that just see which vehicle he is using because he would not be using a quality good product right now. Uh, he would be using a Chinese contraption or a chi chi locally assembled Chinese product because because of the price constraint that is coming from the top, be it the e-commerce companies, big, biz, big Basket, Amazon, all of these companies. So that there is a price constraint because of which a good quality product is not being able to be infused in this uh, commercial application, especially in the two-wheeler and three-wheeler segment. Uh, for four-wheelers, for sure, the use case is different where uh, Tata cars are being ut utilized well in taxi. So now coming back to the two-wheelers, and the three wheelers again. So the demand is huge, but the price constraint pulls the OEMs down in providing a good quality or a better quality product. So right now, whatever is there in the market is a very bottom of the pyramid, very middle, kind of mid-segment product. It's not a best of the best product that can be provided. Now, how do we see it? How do we change this? First, we as a consumer or the organizations on the top which are generating demand should uh, look EV not just as a medium to reduce cost, but it is all, it is a solution for the global uh, green drive that is going on to reduce global warming. So when we talk about EV, we all talk about cost reduction and savings, but it is one side of it. It cannot be 80% and 20% is uh, the green side of things. It should be the other way so that OEMs would be able to provide products which are better uh, as compared with the IC vehicle. Now, going forward, there are companies, there are products which can be provided and can serve the purpose well, but because of the price gap between the expectation of the consumer who is doing the deliveries and the good quality product, the consumer is taking a product which is not that great. So, I represent, I work with SAR Group, uh, we are very serious about integration of all the uh, parts within the ecosystem, be it battery, be it vehicle, be it the drivetrain. So we have a company called LiveGuard which makes batteries. We have a company called LiveGuard Drivetrain which is making drivetrain, motor controller, everything in-house. We have a company called Lime which makes the telematics. We have, the, we have a company called Electrix, where I work. We make the vehicles. We make three-wheelers, we make two-wheelers. And our L, L5 loader is also just on the go, just going to be launched recently. And then we have a company called Moving, which is uh, making swapping stations and deploying swapping stations. So it's an energy management company. So everything put together within the group, we are trying to somehow optimize the cost for the end consumer, uh, just to give you a perspective, we 
कैंसल इलेक्ट्रिक रिक्शा विदाउट बैटरी एंड विद आवर बैटरी कंपनी लिव गार्ड वी कैन गिव बैटरीज ऑन सब्सक्रिप्शन टू अ रिक्शा ड्राइवर सो जस्ट दिस दीज आर जस्ट वेरी नोबल इनोवेशन इन द बिजनेस टू क्रिएट दैट काइंड ऑफ अ इको सिस्टम वेयर इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स आर गेटिंग अडेप्टेड सो फ्रॉम द कॉमर्शियल स्टैंड पॉइंट ऑल्सो एज इट हैज बिन डिस्कस दैट स्वॉपिंग चार्जिंग ऑल दीज सोल्यूशंस आर द सोल्यूशंस दैट आर द राइट सोल्यूशन दैट कैन टेक द डिमांड अप फॉर इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स बट देन प्राइसिंग नीड्स टू बी वर्क आउट दैट वे सो विथ आवर वर्टिकल इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ ऑल द पार्ट्स विद इन द ग्रुप सम हाउ वी आर ट्राइंग टू रिड्यूज एंड ऑप्टिमाइज द कॉस्ट सो दैट इट बिकम्स लिक्रेटिव for the end customer so now coming to what the question was the strategic partnerships and strategy sourcing so partnerships are very very critical for electric vehicle because of so many things that are happening around and so many innovations that are happening so fast that not everyone can do everything so we make vehicles and even within our group also all the companies are independently working so we all are customers to each other so similarly innovation every company every startup today is working on innovation and there is so much that can be learned from each other and partnerships are way forward like be it financial partnerships or uh, the swapping and charging ecosystem partnerships where oems are like moving ahead and partnering with the companies like race gotham was here and log9 dr akshay was here so all these companies we are partnering with to provide that kind of a solution to the customer so i think this is the way forward and partnerships are the main thing that will going to drive electric mobility demand in india yeah no, very nicely put uh, this is working yes me yeah so i will try to um, respond to this within the theme of this session as close to the theme of this session as possible and uh, what the point yasmin has mentioned uh in terms of the manufacturing technology and the processes and the strategic uh, alliances so uh everything basically begins with the customer so customer is uh, the most important uh, part of the entire ecosystem and uh, we will be in the business because of the customer and for the customer so whether it is a ice vehicle or whether it is a ev um customer aspirations are uh, very much uh, demanding and uh, rising day by day a uh, lot of awareness and smart uh, customers today so keeping that in mind what should the oes and what are the oes already doing and what i think the uh, new oes would uh, be required to do so when when you map the customer uh, aspirations uh there are few points which are on the top of the chart one is the uh, safety which is very much important whether it is personal mobility or it's a taxi or a fleet um then there are typically certain areas which are more a priority in the personal mobility uh like uh, uh, after the safety the functionality and performance should be there comfort and convenience should be there and uh, then of course uh, today's world everybody is very much connected so there should be a lot of good amount of connectivity and which is again very important when it comes to ev because we need to be connected to the entire ecosystem including the charging stations and uh, the uh, for the obd kind of diagnostics and every performances of the individual aggregates on the vehicle level so connected connected vehicles are again very important so when you talk about these features and uh, these are the basic parameters which you need to address and that to at a very uh, relevant uh, value proposition because uh, you have the mercedes the eqs or the porsche taycans which will give you the best of all these things but uh, it's not at the mass market price levels so for the faster and larger uh, adoption all these kinds of functionalities and features would need to be packaged by the oes at a very relevant price point now when you have to do this you have to have a manufacturing process which is lean smart which is responsive so the go to times from the development of technology to bringing it to the marketplace so that the consumers can relish that 
and of course uh, it needs to be um, made in such a manner that uh, where which company has whatever spending done in r and d's and what are their core strengths and how much they would like to vertically integrate so that's the individual company's choice so need to have the right amount of integration whether some companies would do very high amount of vertical integration certain companies because of the modularity that is going to be uh, available in uh, the evs which is much more modular than a uh, uh, ice vehicle uh, whether you can do uh, the tie ups with uh, technology partners and strategic vendors and source from them and then do the integration designing and selling and servicing so it's it's every individual uh, oe's strategy how to uh, offer the solutions but the name of the game is that everything then everything that you do uh, should finally meet the customer's aspirations at a right and relevant price point and that's how different uh, business models are getting evolved teslas are going for a very high degree of vertical integration the volkswagens and mahindras are um, kind of doing a, a balancing of these two and i as, as i said every individual company would uh, uh, evolve their own business models to um, service these needs and requirements uh, thank you ashraf and sandeep uh, adding on to them uh, in spiro uh, as ashraf rightly said in our group companies when we approached africa uh, we know the affordability is very less there we came up with a model called pagey model where one of a group company would be taking care of the swap stations and batteries were provided in the subscription model and the vehicle is provided in a pagey model that's where within one and a half years we we'll, we were able to scale uh, from 30 stations to 500 swap stations in about a spread of seven uh, countries in africa with 20000 vehicles so innovation is much needed while scaling up our uh, fleet as well as also in the oem side we started a journey as oem uh, but we ended up being ourselves as an operative company also in our group companies and also having an energy vertical too to bring up that scalability too. so over to himanshu to add his inputs on the same question very rightly mentioned by sandeep ji and also yasmin uh if you just ask or if you just try to do uh, just a random survey because we do a lot of uh, customer expectation uh, surveys the biggest aspect if i just talk about from a ev from a passenger vehicle point of view it is the the range anxiety when we talk about now if i have to just try and put these top points on towards from a range anxiety point of view the first thing is whenever we are buying any ice vehicle we never think of that okay how much uh, how many kilometers this vehicle will do why because i know that okay it's a 50 liters kind of a uh, tank capacity i know and this doing an average of about like 10 12 watt uh, liters uh, 10 12 watt kilometers per liter and that's it it's about like 500 in india we already have started talking about electric vehicles which are doing almost like 400 to 500 odd kilometers the range anxiety when it comes to that do i have a charging station we have lot of uh, charging stations which are present in like metro metropolitan cities the question comes that what happens to when people are driving from one city to another city so does a company like gobb which we see over here is also one of the key sponsors they're doing a fantastic job by putting up all these portable mobile chargers and also like in india this is a new phenomena which we see that the oems are also providing the the wall box chargers whether it's a 3.3 or a 7.2 this is where we as company come into picture where we are doing all these kind of installations we are guiding the customers which is the next nearest portable mobile charger whereas the next cpo what we call it as charge point operators now i will just take a step back and, uh, and 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 try to see in india we have always seen that we have been or, or probably the automotive industry has always seen that they they have tried to follow our european or an american uh, technologies in india we have a big abundance of sun definitely electric vehicles are going to come in definitely this is this will be one of the uh, the, the fastest growing segment what we going to see in in europe we don't see abundance of sun does european uh, i would say 
brands or European uh, OEMs would say that, okay, if I have to invest in towards a technology, I need to ensure that or I need to have at least uh, a substantial amount of sun. Now in Europe, I'm sure a lot of people would have traveled. Out of those 12 months, we hardly get three to four proper months where we get sun. Now come to India, out of those 12 months, I'm damn sure everybody would agree, certain, uh, certain, leaving certain parts of India, almost out of those 12 months, 11 months we got abundance of sun. Or let me put another question. I'm sure yesterday everybody would have seen uh, the, the, the World Cup finals, India versus South Africa and congratulations to everyone. The stadium over there had those solar panels, right? So that's the kind of a shift what, what's going to happen. And electric vehicles or the, or the motor uh, industry, what we talk about, this is also would be headed for that kind of a shift. Everything is going to get revolutionized while we are seeing and a lot of policies which we are seeing which are uh, manufacturer friendly, customer friendly, whether it's coming in from these tax slops. So all these things are going to are carving out a, a different niche segment. And uh, like what Arab said, uh, they, they are working on towards the last mile connectivity. We are seeing that Amazons and the Flipkarts of the world are coming to our places to deliver. Now we have started seeing they, they, are, they, they are trying to use only electric vehicle. So that's the kind of a change. The last mile connectivities would be the first one. And then gradually towards when we talk about the blue smarts or when we talk about the Uber green. So these are the vehicles. When you start seeing these vehicles, then you start believing in them. So that's the change what we are heading to. So that's what I wanted to add to you, right? Thank you. And I have one specific question to you. Uh, how can these specialized financial and insurance services provided by example, Alliance Partners or uh, any other partners in India can help OEMs navigate the risk associated with infrastructure development and also the operational efficiency? For example, and also I need your inputs on uh, seeing on the sales perspective how does these insurance and alliances on the financial partners help to develop the sales much better thank you yasmin for that question uh, see insurances or these kind of uh, assurances rather than insurances we also talk about assurances a lot of now the batteries are coming with a standard eight years or a five years or ten years kind of warranties now we are working on that, okay, how can we provide these kind of an extended warranty? Like we would have never ever heard, heard about, like generally it used to be a two years kind of an OEM warranty. It went to three years, four years, five years. Now with batteries are coming with like eight years kind of an uh, OEM warranty. Now what about the other vehicle? And also if you are, there, is, there is a Volvox charger which is being provided by the OEMs. Oh, the Volvox chargers are coming with one year kind of a warranty only. So we are uh, revolutionizing that. We are adding those values back where we are saying that we can provide uh, extended warranty solutions. We can provide those financial aspects as well. Now, I was interacting with one of the gentlemen today morning. They were saying that, what about the credit risk insurances? Yes, so that's the place where we are talking about. It is besides that, it is also about trying to see when there is an electric vehicle out there in the market, what is the customer's ask? Uh, because it's a demand and supply. Now, if there is a product which is there, obviously that product has seen a sunrise because there was a demand for the same. That's where, and we, we are trying to revolutionize these products. We are trying to add a lot of customer friendly, a lot of customer oriented uh, uh, initiatives, which will help them like, like coming up with the portable mobile chargers. Like there is a portable mobile charger which can go on the spot, can provide a charge. And in fact, that's what we are uh, uh, pioneering in that in case if somebody needs electric uh, charge to their EVs. So we have developed a state of art kind of a vehicle which can go on the spot, can provide a charge. Never ever would have anybody thought that, okay, well, is that possible? So that kind of a heavy load, that kind of a heavy current which is flowing, can it actually go on the spot and provide? So we are just trying to create, like we understand that there is a gap. We do those kind of a gap analysis and try to bring in those products. So that's from my end. Yeah. Thank you. And also, uh, on the OEM perspective, I like to hear it from all three of you. Is CNG giving a threat to electric OEMs and the electric startups who are into this space? CNG, 
I I am specifically coming from electric two wheeler background. For me, it is not a, a CNG is not a threat for electric two wheeler form factor. But just from cars perspective, it is from an end user for a person who wants to buy a four wheeler. He is going to compare his purchase not just with petrol or diesel, but also with CNG and CNG with that kind of a marginal. Uh, price gap between an electric and a CNG, for sure he is going to have a, uh, a doubt in his mind because of a pure uh, established technology and a product with a resale value, well-defined resale value. So that is one of the threat for a four-wheeler kind of a use uh, form factor vehicle. But from a two-wheeler perspective, it is not. But uh, coming, this is a very relevant question that that is why we are saying that commercial is making a larger use case right now for electric because CNG is for sure is going and to the end customer, individual person who is going to buy a vehicle from fleet size like Blue Smart and all who, are, who have done a great job in deploying electric vehicles. Similar companies like those can find much better benefit out of electric cars. Uh, so it is not a vis CNG is not a vis a vis threat to electric pertaining to commercial deployments. But yes, from an end user perspective, it is going to create some thoughts for the individual buyer. Uh, yeah, actually, um, uh, since uh, EVs are pretty nascent in terms of their technologies and current uh, cost of the inputs based on which the pricing is done, um, and uh, the other uh, kinds of uh, technologies are ex existing for a pretty long time, like the eyes or eyes coupled with uh, CNG. So these are going to coexist for a certain amount of time. And then there will be a cutoff time wherein the, uh, the vehicles will be mostly pure electric. I'll just give an example. Uh, when uh, you have an electric car, the cost per kilometer comes to operating cost per kilometer for approximately 70% home charging, 30% uh, DC quick charging and the public uh, stations will come to between 1.25 to 1.4 depending on a typical model that is rupees per kilometer. So when you compare this with the CNG operated prices which vary between four and a half to six per kilometer as well as the hybrids also fall in that and diesel cost comes to about eight rupees a kilometer petrol goes somewhere between 12 to 14 depending on the size of the vehicle. So these are the operating costs per kilometer. Now, the day the price parity, initial purchase price parity happens, I don't think there would be a discussion about which technology will uh, prevail. But of course, yes, it's a transition. Uh, the, the prices for the initial purchase price for the EVs need to be at par, and which is likely to happen two to three years down the line. And that's where we feel the inflection point will happen. So from the current level of about two, two and a half percent of penetration in the, uh, in the passenger cars, uh, it's expected to go to around 30% uh, by 2030. That's the basic understanding of different uh, OEs and technology players and the government. So, uh, yes, so for time being, I think every, everybody will coexist. And uh, as the ecosystem develops and everything happens, uh, it would actually be uh, all will, uh, you know, the, the commercially best will prevail. Also wanted to uh, highlight to one point which Himanshu had uh, mentioned earlier. Um, that's about range anxiety. So range anxiety is what? Uh, I think uh, most of uh, the consumers, it is mostly perceived, perceived range anxiety. Because if you see the early, the first mass market uh, uh, electric vehicle, which was a Nissan Leaf, it had a 16.5 or 17 kWh battery which would uh, make it travel about 110, 115 kilometers on a single charge. Now the mass market batteries, uh, the mass market vehicles have battery sizes varying from uh, typically 60 kWh to 75, 78 kWh. So the range has definitely increased. So the only thing which has happened is the definition of range anxiety has changed. So earlier when people used to think that I'll get stranded if I go long distance, my battery will get discharged. I'll get stranded on the highways or somewhere. It is not that because the charging stations have come. But yes, the anxiety is now that they have to wait for 40 minutes to one hour at a charging station. So the definition of range anxiety has definitely changed. 
but uh, it's not that anybody would get stranded uh, on the road uh, for the lack of uh, the charge in the battery. Yeah, so this, these were the two points I wanted to highlight. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, and also, I have one question specifically for you. Uh, your views on uh, modular testings, mainly on the BMS, how does that facilitate for uh, fast uh, iteration changes inside the vehicle? mainly on the BMS segment and how does this modular testing work now because uh, the upgrades in electric vehicles mainly in the battery segment is very fast and very rapid. So how does these uh, modular testing method work and how does that modular technologies work? Yeah, so uh, basically uh, uh, as a startup we are trying to uh, dissociate ourselves from a very core programming or uh, the uh, algorithm writing uh, and we are trying to push it to the our battery manufacturer and uh, yes they are working on these lines in terms of the best available solutions for monitoring all the electrical and the thermal parameters at the cell level and then trying to uh, get the feedback and uh, from the kind of connected uh, networks and uh, they also have a data of uh, since these manufacturers of battery have the data on different cell chemistries, different type of battery designs. They have a host of data on which they have worked their um, simulations and uh, they are continuously evolving. And of course, the uh, kind of uh, uh, number of iterations uh, AI is nowadays making them uh, do is making the job uh, probably uh, slightly better. I think the Panelists from the earlier session like uh, Akshay and uh, Gautam would have been able to answer it much more better, being from that particular uh, technology domain. But yes, that's what we are demanding as an OE from our battery and cell manufacturers. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, over to Himanshu, what is the pain points you see as in uh, uh, from an insurance and assurance provider to the OEMs? Anything which you want to address it here so people can understand much on your perspective as well. Thank you, Yasmin, for that question. Uh, while we talk about pain points, like what Sandeep Ji also mentioned, everything evolves around the customer. We talk about CX. It's the customer's experience. Now, while we spoke about a range anxiety that, okay, the customers might be having those challenges of 40, 45 odd minutes to be stranded on a spot, but there are a lot of these alternate solutions which are coming up, whether it is from a portable mobile chargers or all these they, where we have these chargers installed, there are these coffee shops which are coming up, which is again boosting up the economy where they are coming up with some kind of a coffee shops or there are certain kind of a shopping areas which would help the customers to, uh, to, to, to go ahead and spend some time. Or let us just take, I just recently did uh, uh, from, from Delhi to Jaipur. In between there were several rest areas which had those charging points. So you had those Starbucks, you had those McDonald's and you have all these. Now, the only piece over there would be, now, am I sure while I start my journey from Delhi or from a point A to point B, would I have a charge charging uh, station? Now, we are developing a solution which would say that, okay, you can pre-book your slots. Now, while I say pre-book your slots, you start at 10 o'clock from a journey from a destination A and you know that you, would, you will take about like 5 hours, 6 hours, maybe a 12 hours to reach that particular destination. And you know that the distance between these two points is like 700 odd kilometers. Now in 700 kilometers, definitely you're gonna take some breaks. So we are trying to customize everything from a customer experience from a, from a CX point of view, trying to bring in those kind of a predefined, pre-designed, uh, from an agile point of view, those customer solution that you can pre-book your slots at these charging points. The CPUs which are there, we are trying to put together or several charge point operators where we can bring them onto one platform uh, because together everyone grows. Makes no sense that, okay, I have my 400 odd uh, chargers which are installed uh, across India, but we need to also try and see how we can regulate these traffics. Still, like what Sandeep Ji said, uh, people are averse from pulling out their vehicles, uh, moving out of the city while I talk about an, uh, a, a four-wheeler. We spoke about Tycon, we spoke about EQS. 
Now, am I confident that, okay, while I would be moving out from Mumbai, driving down to maybe a Bangalore or from a Bangalore to Chennai, do I get those kind of… A, so, but if you are already aware that there are five solutions which are available and you can pre-book and you will get a real-time update that, okay, there are four charges and you get one charger which is blocked maybe at 10 o'clock, you can enter and by from 10 to 11, the charger number four would be allocated to you. All these can be a predefined prepaid solutions so that it's again working out from a customer convenience point of view. So these kind of a solutions where because these things are we say are these available? Yes, these are already available. I'm not saying that we are trying to copy but we are trying to customize and we are trying to add a lot of value to it. What if along with this I say that uh, at these charge point locations you can get certain kind of a discount coupons as well. So you, you get while your electric vehicle is charging Parallelly, you can enjoy a coffee at a 20% or a 30% or an X percent kind of a discount or probably you might have ordered for a tall but you at the same price you get a grand day. So these kind of a customizations which will help the customers as well uh, are definitely in, 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 in for a, you're going to see a lot of such kind of a customized solution which will be coming up. Yeah. Thank you. So open for Q&A session. Can, we can have an interaction and have questions answered. Can I have mics? Can someone provide can a mic there? Hello and thank you for the wonderful and insightful uh, presentation. I am Tarun Thakur from uh, Mercedes-Benz R&D, the innovation team. And uh, we spoke a lot about the EQS today, which is great. <laughs> and uh, so we have a range of uh, 857 kilometers. So we nailed the range anxiety part that's gone out of the picture, right? Now, uh, we also developed all of these uh, safety parameters, we did uh, functional testing, we did everything, but then in the end, we could not gauge the customer's perception. In the end, the customer tells us and uh, tells us that this vehicle looks like an egg, like an egg, okay? So, uh, the customer perceives that it wants a vehicle which should look like the S-Class, right? And not like a very aerodynamic uh, EQS. So it's not doing well uh, in terms of sales, to be honest, which is why we developed the new G class and we did not name it EQG, we call it the G580, right? So how do we gauge the customer perceptions where we are nailing the range anxiety, we are nailing the aerodynamics, we are doing functional testing, we're doing everything in features, safety, everything, but then we could not gauge the customer's perception. What is your uh, point of view on that? Is I'll take... Then sir, can, I'll take one, I'll give you one input on this and then other panelists can say, but in marketing, there's a core concept. I, since it is Mercedes-Benz, there's hardly one can say anything, but beyond that, in marketing, there is one core concept and that is creating point of parity first and then creating point of differentiation. Since electric is so nascent in India, customers uh, see around five, eight years back, we didn't wanted to put electric on our scooters, which we were selling because we didn't wanted the customer to be differentiated because there was no pride on ownership of electric scooter five, eight years back. So that and automobile is all about uh, pride of ownership. So when a electric product is being sold, they, it should be aligned with the customer's mindset and pro and what he is looking for especially the design side of things. So, this is one of the things that I wanted to bring that we have to create that point of parity. That is, that is why when we look at the two-wheeler category, then the best of the best product that we see in India is a Bajaj Chetak. It's a good electric two-wheeler, but it looks similar to a petrol two-wheeler. Now it is not getting too much of acceptance because of the price, but then we see a product like a Aether, which is a futuristic product. But then Aether has again launched a product, which is a Aether Rista, which is a traditional scooter. So the Indian consumer has its own mindset of how, what it, what the, what they want. And that is 
we need to create that point of parity based what they have been used to using and then that differentiation is the next step where we can add more design lines and make it a different product but today they want parity that's what our experience has been um sorry i am actually uh, not so qualified to answer question uh, of this for the company stature as mercedes um it's a fantastic brand great brand every i think citizen in the world aspires to associate uh, themselves with that brand so probably you would have more uh, research data or you would have gone through that learning curve uh, in a much more better fashion um but i think what uh, if your experience of uh, this sales not picking up is only uh, for the indian market so uh, it's a very difficult market indian market so even when we are today trying to design and uh, uh, benchmark a vehicle and then probably launch it uh, in the next couple of years we are going through a lot of uh, the minute details and the nitty gritties and i think this is one area probably where um, the european or the uh, us car makers have probably failed to read the market to the extent the koreans and the japanese have done that uh, probably uh, this something to do with the uh, india specific uh, needs designs or the relevance of the uh, certain uh, aspirational values or uh, of the indian consumer and uh, that's where i think uh, probably everybody would need to focus as a oe uh, because customers are very very demanding and uh, so i come from a steel industry and uh, here we used to always uh, when we used to source uh, steel for any consumption we used to always uh, ask the uh, vendors or the steel mills can you give us the uh, steel which is of german or japanese quality and uh, at russian or ukrainian prices so that's what the indian customer always uh, looks at the best of the functionalities features and at the uh, most uh, attractive prices and uh, how one can actually package it and offer it but of course without compromising on the safety and functionality so you look at any uh, korean cars like the kias or the hyundai's very very feature rich uh, very very relevant to what Uh, the consumers want in terms of new technology in terms of appearances in terms of the connected technologies and all this smartphone or the tablet features which now a car is typically uh, it's a lifestyle product on wheels so uh, the right value proposition as i think and at the relevant times um, that's what probably would matter much uh, than anything else but i this just only as a very very at a macro level or as an industry outsider or uh, your company outsider i think your people would have probably gone through all these uh, revelations and other things in a much more detailed fashion and they would be able to probably give you a better solution uh, within themselves itself i hope uh, try to answer you i would just like to add this is the indian customer base right people buying an ev they would prefer that if they are buying an ev why because like what sandeep ji said are you buying a mass brand are you buying a premium brand are you buying a niche brand and somewhere uh, we are handling lot of customer experiences i still say it's a good sign if the people are coming back and they are saying that okay this was my expectation this is my expectation and this is what i want more that's the best sign that's the best sign when the people are coming back and they are having an expectation believe you me even if you add 1000 other features they that's how the indian customers are right and i'm sure somewhere i i i, I take that uh, smile as a nod to it and that's 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 the tough part where we are into this business and we have to somewhere there, there is no perfection to it that's a ever evolving ever increasing demands coming from our customers and that what always helps us to be on our toes and trying to evolve try to bring out that kind of an exceptional experience even if we add those 10 odd features 20 odd features still there would be something more and obviously like what sandeep ji said that 
uh, I would want a German or I would want an XYZ kind of a safety, but maybe a price at some uh, something which would be a dirt cheap. But I would want the safety features. I would want uh, some kind of a connectivity features. I would want electric. I would want everything to it. But yes, that's what the Indian and that's what always keeps us on our toes, trying to evolve, trying to bring in something more uh, constructive, trying to bring in more innovative kind of which will help and hit that right note. Today, we being in 2024, come 2026, all this what we are talking about might be just a farce. Okay, this is what we used to do. But now we are in 27, 28, the things have changed. Right. So that's, that's, that's an ever evolving uh, piece. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if I may ask, uh, excuse me. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, there's a question I would like to put forth and also a view, uh, which I think uh, the the panel and for the audience here. Uh, I'm Babu, I'm a co-founder of uh, Surya EV. Uh, we are a purpose-built uh, uh, last mile mobility solution provider. We are making our vehicle which is a purpose-built product for the last mile mobility. So uh, interesting theme which was discussed uh, that uh, the low hanging fruit or the earliest opportunity for electric vehicles is with the commercial vehicles. Uh, and I uh, understand, uh, of course, some of you are working with uh, OEMs or building uh, products on your own. A uh, good question also posed on the form factor, which is uh, driving OE. Uh, but uh, uh, I didn't hear a lot of discussion on born electric, uh, which is, uh, I think, the future of what OEMs are moving towards. Probably the question I would like to ask and also the thought uh, provoking thing is uh, how is uh, the industry changing? from using a car, converting it from a conversion, uh, conventionalized to an EV. Uh, you know, it could be an ambassador which looks like an ambassador but can be driven in a, uh, uh, with an electric vehicle to a born electric platform which is purely meant for the performance of a, uh, and uh, delivering the efficiency of an electric vehicle. So how is the industry adapting to it and what is the outlook for that? from a born electric uh, future, just ignoring only the form factor, but also the performance as a born electric. Um, sorry, I don't want to use the uh, term born electric because Mahindra has uh, IP on it. But yes, we are talking about the pure EV platform. So uh, as far as the consumer is concerned, he wants a total value proposition, which addresses, as I said, the basic parameters of functionality, performance, features, uh, uh, safety, connectivity and everything. And uh, they don't wa they want a very simple product uh, which is uh, uh, very, very aesthetic and meets all these aspirations. They're not really bothered about uh, how you're making it. So that's how uh, Tata's and the Mahindra's initially started uh, producing the uh, EV cars on a ICE platform. Now what that does is it actually increases their manufacturing process time and the complications because they are trying to fit a battery and they're trying to fit an electric drivetrain on a configuration which was supposed to fit the uh, ice engine and the transmissions and the gear systems and the exhaust systems plus also the entire platforms whether uh, uh, other than the biw and certain mechanical aggregates so if you look at the um, the electric architecture, if you look at the fluid architecture, everything is very, very different for a pure EV platform. So it is from the manufacturer's perspective of cost, process efficiencies, and the final price offering that they can uh, extend to the consumer, which they have to address whether they are going to do it on a, a ICE platform or a pure EV platform. As far as the consumer is concerned, they want a very good vehicle with um, an absolutely meeting their aspirations. So uh, it's a manufacturer's prerogative or it's a manufacturer's challenge to move from uh, ICE or a common platform to a pure EV platform. And I don't know how many people were there yesterday, but uh, very surprised to understand Stellantis is using the same platform for both their ICE vehicles and EVs and how they are going to achieve cost efficiencies manufacturing on different production lines and still be able to give the same amount of uh, features at the, at the price parities that you're talking about. So uh, I hope I've tried to answer your question. So since we are, the industry is evolving, electric vehicle industry is evolving. So, and 
in the past generations we have seen how toyota and hondas have changed the world with lean manufacturing and other philosophy that they have brought into manufacturing so this is and in the end our oem only sees that how many number of vehicle he can sell so it is bringing a lot of economic sense to the oem uh, if the platform is hybrid where ic and uh, electric can work together and eventually it is a win win situation and this could be something new for the electric to for some time until the majority of uh, customers take over until then it, it is a win win situation for oem as well as the consumer thank you so much